What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie the Dream Poet here coming to you all from a totally not so beautiful day here in Tunnel Hill, Georgia. Now Tunnel Hill, Georgia, it is right between Chattanooga and Dalton and actually it was a railroad town for quite a while. But anyway guys, that is the reason why we are down here today. Because today we are going to check out the old Tunnel Hill, Georgia tunnel. And before we do that, we have to get admission over at the museum, the train depot, which is only like, not even like two minutes down the road. But as we're heading down there, let me show you all this awesome covered bridge. Now this covered bridge that we're going to and we're driving through right now, this is perhaps one of the smallest drug covered bridges I have ever seen. Anyway, here it is. This is the Gillespie Austin Covered Bridge. We're going to go through it. And right as we entered it, we exited it. It is a very small covered bridge. Now, right as we just drove through it, let's walk up to it now and let's see what it looks like up close. It's so little. By the way, if you all are curious, this bridge was constructed in 1850. And I believe from what I read, this wood right here already then was a 75 year old barn wood. But it does look like they do have viewing points. Because right over there, there's the, uh, the train bridge and where all the water's coming out. This one definitely dwarfs uh, the last covered bridge I went to, which I think that was the Harrisburg covered bridge in, in Sevierville. I mean, this one is just super tiny. It's so little. In fact, I wonder if maybe this is just the smallest covered bridge in the state of Georgia. It's so itty bitty. Now let's walk up close and let's check out the train bridge. But really it's not so much a train bridge, I guess it's just the trestle where the, uh, the train passes through. Obviously there is a lot of water that is pouring out from there. Looks like there is a tiny, a tiny uh, cascade over there. But yeah, to start off this vlog, since it is right next to the, uh, the Tunnel Hill train depot, I figured we would stop here first. So anyway, let's get to it and let's get to the depot. Now you all must be curious what the historic Tunnel Hill train depot is all about. And as I'm talking here, I'll show you the historic marker that tells a little bit more about this awesome historical location. The Western and Atlantic Railroad Tunnel. This 1,447 foot long Chitega Mountain Railroad Tunnel is one half mile east of this marker. The tunnel was completed in 1850 and this railroad tunnel completed south of the Mason-Dixon line and linked railroads from the Atlantic and the Mississippi River. The railroad was operating during the late 1840s and goods and passengers were ported over Chitega Mountain while the tunnel was under construction. A community grew near the construction activity in Calispe Austin building a three-story hotel in 1848. Tunnel Hill was incorporated in March 4th, 1840 or 1848. The WNA was approved by the chat or, ch or the Georgia legislature in 1836 and surveyed by Stephen Harriman Long. Construction of the 137 mile line took 13 years and a cost of more than $4 million. That's a lot of money. William L. Mitchell was chief engineer and William William Gray was chief mason. Gray was given the headings were driven through October 31st, 1849. The tunnel was in use until larger locomotives and loads necessitated a larger tunnel in 1928. The tunnel played a role in one of the most colorful exploits of the Civil War, the Great Locomotive Chase. James J. Andrews and his band of Union 
engine thieves raced the stolen general through the tunnel closely pursued by the Texas under W. Er, William Fuller and Confederate forces. And that's the cool history about uh, the tunnel. I forgot to mention that as well. This tunnel also played a part in the Great Locomotive Chase. I did a video on that a while back and I do recommend it. I went to the major sites that um, the, the, general, the general in the race and the graves of James J. Andrews and his men took place. Yeah, it's a good video. And here's another awesome uh, recreation, or I should say display that they have here in the museum. You see, since this was a train depot, there were a lot of passengers coming through, especially in the 1840s through the 1860s, until the railroads kind of fizzled out and people started using cars. But here are some baggage cars. It looks like one is not restored and one of them is i'm guessing it's probably for side by side comparisons and this tells a little bit more about the uh all the uses that came with the baggage carts and i was not expecting to see this but they have sherman neckties but then again this is north georgia and this is where sherman took his men on the burning to the sea so, I mean, I kind of see why they might have some Sherman neckties. And if y'all are curious what neck or Sherman neckties are, is during the Civil War, General Sherman and his men, they made a march to the sea. But there was a very important thing. You see, locomotives were a very important part of, uh, of American culture and transportation. So really, what he and his men would do when they would break up the railroad lines, they would also break up the uh, they'd also break up off the metal, and that they'd do is they'd set them across like a big fire pit, and it would melt the uh, the beams to where they couldn't be used anymore. Well, not beams, tracks. So therefore, making them useless, and the or the Confederacy in that area or where have you could not do anything with them. Now I am heading inside the museum and I'm going to check this out. And then we are headed into the tunnel. Head to the tunnel. Now I will say I'm glad that we are in here now. <laughs> Cause right now it is raining pretty bad. Yeah. So what a great day to, okay. to choose a day to, to take a vlogging day. By the way, this is a really good movie. I, I remember having that as a kid. Now, I never saw the Buster Keaton one. That one I never saw. Now let's make the descent into history, friends. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to. Check out that cannon. Next time I talk to Raymond, I'll ask <laughs> I think that, well, I want to say it's a reenactment one, but it might actually, well, let's see. 1862 Civil War. No, so yeah. Yeah, this is an actual, an actual cannon. It's pretty nice. Looks like they keep it pretty well up kept. And they also keep, oh, oh, that's nice. That's really cool. Historic Foster Cemetery. Looks like that's a hospital flag. And the Bonnie Blue flag. Looks like they've got a few pictures of various men. That served. Oh, cool, Florida. And looks like this may have been an excavation site. It looks like they've got some uh, some various different things that came out of an old house. Old brick, too. Said something, 33rd Alabama. J.B. Small. Or Snell. There's a picture of him right there. Now, at first, I thought these are what you used to stuff the ammunitions in a cannon with, but these are actually old school old school things that people would prop their arms up, or prop, them, prop themselves up with. There's a picture right there that kind of describes it a little bit more. And cool, they have medical supplies in the time period. Oh yeah, let's see what this is all about. Battlefield County, or no, Whitfield County, Georgia. Oh, now this is really cool. Display courtesy of Robert See, Alt Tunnel Hill, Georgia. Confederate lumber property of Captain Jacob Morgan, commander of Company 1. 
So it looks like this may be one of his his coach boxes here on display. And it definitely has some age. No telling what this thing is seen. It's called a limber chest. Now this was made at a time when things were made to last, to say the least. There's a picture of Jacob Morgan. And now here is a map, an aerial map of Tunnel Hill Battlefield Park. And this is the whole property right here that's opened. Um, trying to find where we might be at. If not, oh well, awesome. Here's the, uh, the old train tunnel. This is the new one. That one was built in 1928. Oh, they have an old English teapot. Looks like it's made out of silver. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's made out of silver. So as we enjoy the warmth, let's check out another one of the main exhibits. We'll see what this is all about. In this display, they have more medical stuff. Medical needs aboard the trains for passengers and health and comfort during the trip. It's like, what does this say? Six antiseptic gauze pads for large wounds. Six antiseptic gauze pads for some, huh. So it looks like even back then they had, uh, they had antiseptic stuff. And did you know that during the Civil War on the battlefield, they, they used, le or not leeches, they used uh, maggots. And maggots actually did save a lot of people. They would eat the infections and the doctors would, or surgeons I should say, would clean out the maggots and well, the person would survive. Ooh, and that's a nice pink dress. But that's an even nicer general's uniform. <laughs> I have some paintings here on display. Alfred R. Watt, 1828 to 1891. And it looks like he was an illustrator. Looks like he, he painted and drew up a lot of the stuff that looks like it was seen on the battlefields. We've got some more of his stuff right here. And there's a picture of William Watt himself. I think he, uh, I'm guessing he probably sent a lot of his illustrations back because during the time, um, it was just really expensive to use use cameras. And real, really, camera technology had not, had not progressed well enough to be used with, with, uh, with the ability... Oh, well, that was scary. And to this day, I'm the only woman to receive the award. Huh. Well, interesting. Apparently this woman was the... Let the generations know that women in uniform also oh. guaranteed their freedom. Well, okay, then she spoke again. So, yes, she was the, uh, the only female Medal of Honor recipient. That was a little bit scary, not gonna lie. Especially she came out of nowhere. But I did not know that a woman was, or a woman from the Civil War had won the Medal of Honor. And I've seen one of these before. Back up down when I was in Florida, I found one in the, uh, off the nearby riverbank. Huh, don't know what that's all about. That's, well, apparently this wrench. Oh gosh, that's heavy. That is from 1941. And what is this? This is a railroad tool. I'm wondering if they used it to separate and space out the railroad tracks. In 1870, I was arrested in New Orleans hmm. for wearing pants. Railroad tool table. Well, this is the tool table, but, hmm. Railroad brakeman switch wrench. Two man rock drill. Two man rock drill. That's pretty interesting. They have an old school chess set. Well, maybe not so much an old school chess set, but it is a, tress <laughs> a chess set. Looks like they've got some cannonballs right here. 12 pound solid shot, Civil War cannonball found in South Dalton many years ago by a Miss Maggie Woods. So I'm taking all these were discovered in the nearby area. 
Those are some really big cannonballs. <laughs> I could have bought a cannonball at one point that had been dug up, but I didn't. I kind of regret that. The construction of a 1,447 foot long tunnel that luckily, since it is rainy outside, we are going to check out. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Now today it is self-guided just because it's so rainy outside, but I don't mind that. In fact, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Looks like they've got some ax pieces that were found courtesy of Larry Thornton, Marvin Sto Soder, Kenneth Holcomb. Huh, look at that cool piece, bent piece of railroad track. This tells a lot of history. That is one big ax. And here's a display regarding the great locomotive chase. Again, this tunnel that we're about to check out, that played a major part because the general had to go through the tunnel. Looks like these are the various men that played a big role in it. This old strap iron and string bar found near the WNA tunnel. So looks like that was found at the actual tunnel site. Just look at that really beautiful old school picture. Ooh, look at that. There is one of the actual Medal of Honors during the Great Locomotive Chase. Okay, now that is really awesome to think. I mean, did you know that the Great Locomotive Chase, that is how the, uh, the Medal of Honor was created? Bet y'all didn't know that. The Shiloh, Perryville, Mercy, Murfreesboro, Chickamauga, Tunnel Hill. There, I'm guessing that's a battle flag. I don't think it is. Winter Camp Keys Battery looks like this is a display of what the Confederacy looked like at the time. Display courtesy of Marvin Snowder or Soder and Larry Thornton. So it looks like this is a lot of Larry Thornton and Marvin Soder stuff. Looks like these are actually I used to own a piece of a grape shot one time, but that was many years ago, and I don't think don't think that I have it anymore. I think I had to sell it. Um, cool, and they have a crow's foot. Now the crow's foot, <laughs> I think that kind of explains itself. You see soldiers, they would throw it on the battlefield and well, <laughs> the soldiers would step on it and it'd be the equivalent of stepping on a Lego in today's world. And you can never go wrong with the giant railroad sign. What else do they have here? Looks like they've got some old train bells. I like that brass one right there and that whistle right there. Looks like they've got a couple more right here, a couple of lights, fourth wall case. Looks like they've got some old school locks from the time period. It looks like we're kind of getting into some more of transportation at Tunnel Hill. It's a beautiful old picture right there. Um, Notice, all persons are warned not to trespass on the bridge, on this bridge. Well, I mean, I don't blame you because you, you wouldn't want to get hurt. Old canteens, and honestly, I really feel like there's another In part of the exhibit. The Gosh, she scared me again. Um, it makes me feel like there's more to the museum than there is, but, but no. It's it's a it's a glass mirror. <laughs> now before we go in, I thought I would show you all some of the stuff that they have out here. These are some of the lot well I won't say limestone. These are some of the rocks that were used to build the tunnel originally back in 1850. And actually, it talks a little bit more about it right here. These blocks are some of the limestone blocks that were cut from the surface rock on Rocky Face Ridge and brought down for use in the building of the tunnel and the nearby WA depot in the mid-1800s. So, I guess I was right. It is limestone. I don't, well, I mean, limestone can be pretty durable, I suppose. And that's something you don't see every day. There is a big giant train wheel sitting out here. Yeah. That thing probably weighs easily about five, six hundred pounds. That's that's not moving. Now that's pretty cool. 
you know what you guys i was kind of thinking about using like some of the gen, gen z slang like dude this is so dope no cap yeah i'm not doing that but if you all are wondering this is an old train light or i think it's an old train light looks like it was for the time anyway looks like somebody would climb up on the top of it and that's how they do it and this is the base what does it say it says general railway signal co so yeah it's a railway signal and it's just sitting here and is it just me or does this feel like i'm entering silent hill i feel like i'm entering silent hill but no this is the tunnel yes let's enter the tunnel what we came here to see and hopefully get out from this rain after a bit now i did bring a headlight so i do have that so luckily i don't have to worry about being dark in a place that's dark and damp and well it's already wet outside being wet does not help yay yay we made it inside <laughs> whatever no intrar means that's really cool that's the actual uh marker that talks about it and who would have thought there is a photo op out here and now that i am inside i have my light I don't think I need it on full blast because it looks like the tunnel is pretty well lit so I might not even need it so I might just turn it off and just walk through it I'm now here where it is slightly warm and my hands are well kind of cold oh so yeah it is well lit awesome it's like you've got some of the old rock work right here so that is nice to see that there is a light going through here now did i mention that while i was on my way uh on my way to the tunnel that these lights were going off but the thing is i'm the only one out here today so i think if I'm not mistaken, say that a lot, I think this tunnel is haunted. And it looks really like for the time being I am going to have to use my, uh, my headlamp. But here is a display that talks about it. And here is another one. And uh, I think this right here, this is where people would jump in to escape if they got stuck in the train or got stuck in the path of the train tunnel i think um but as i was saying when i was on my way out here just a second ago these lights that light up the tunnel they were going off now i don't know if that is a common thing or a common occurrence Maybe this one will light up. Nope. But I just found that so bizarre that it lit up. You know, did y'all hear that? I mean, I know it's probably just me, but I could have sworn I heard a whisper. The light went on briefly, but there we go. That one's working. Just as I turn my headlamp off again looks like that one is lighting too and i wonder what the ghost story is that's associated with the tunnel hill uh, tunnel because that's so weird because i could have sworn i heard something just a second ago and it went to pitch blackness again so well that one went off but i think there is a ghost story associated with the tunnel hill train tunnel and by the way so you all can see it a little bit more look at the rock work and how 
far that they had to dig to get to the other side of the tunnel. It looks like this one might go off again. Or this one might go off. Nope. Here's another one of those porthole tunnel or one of those port things. Now, I know in the Mr. Nomad Ben intro, it's all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. Well, Ben is hiding in one of these and he's like I can see my breath. It's pretty cold in here. It's it's it feels like it's practically a uh, let me turn this down a little bit. It feels like a uh, looks like it just feels like ice cold in here. Like, but then again, that's what's kind of expected with stuff like this. It's just because it's inside the mountains and the temperature changes in here. I'm just admiring the rock work that went into all this. And the lights, they have help. Then again, that one will probably go off as soon as uh, I walk away from it. And I really wish I had caught it just a minute ago, but at the far end, the light went off. I'm not sure if it'll happen again. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I'm being followed. Was not expecting to, uh, was not expecting to get that feeling. Then again, I'm the only one that's in here today. Yeah, <laughs> that's creepy. Again, my friend, Mr. Nomad Ben, he got in this one. Oh, that light went off. That's good. But anyway, well, darn it. Anyway, it's like the moment that I walk in like one of those porthole things, it gets dark again. You see, that's what I'm talking about. I finally caught it. That's one of the lights that was going off. And at the far end of the tunnel, it was doing that as well. So I finally caught it. Well, I did. Maybe we'll see it again. Well, see? There's a light at the end of that, too. Okay, this is getting a little bit weird. <laughs> I wasn't even close to that one this time. But then again, I think that one... I don't know, like I said, at the far end, it went off. And I'm the only one in here, and those are sensors. 1,400 feet does not feel like 1,400 feet. It kind of just feels like it's like emptiness with a little bit of wind. And I feel like even with my light, it still doesn't, well, Okay, then that one went off. So that's kind of weird. It's like, I guess they go off with, a, or they, they all have a mind of their own. Huh, check that out. That is a big hole. And that also shows you what it was like on the inside. There's a piece of wood. It looks like a little bit of moisture in there as well. And here's the light that's been going off. Once you have it, that one went off too. Well, at least we're at the end of the tunnel. So I guess that's, that's the important part. And it looks like they even have a place where you can sit and uh, another one of those, those, uh, those whole things. And as they say, there is a light at the end of the tunnel with a lot of wind blowing. 
Yes, that's a lot of wind. But it looks like we finally reached the, uh, the end of it. With the Western and Atlantic logo right beyond the gates. And you know what, you guys? I'm calling this another vlog for another day because it is just cold, wet, and nasty in here. And it's like ice cold in this tunnel. But anyway, you guys, remember, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Always means a lot. Goes to show that y'all care. Now y'all want to see more awesome videos. So without further ado, you guys, this vlog is over.